Hello, 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 you guys. I am really hoping. It is like nine o'clock in the morning. I am, no, actually it's 10 o'clock. I am really hoping, you guys, that I can get through this video in one take, in one take without the heat cutting off my camera. I really wanna get this message out here. I know, as you guys can see, the title of this video is Black Women are no longer a match for black men. I said it, I said it. I just, I have to be completely direct with you guys and I just gotta tell you what I am seeing out here and my experience. I don't think black women are the best match for black men anymore. Maybe back in the day okay before we have all these options and before all of this access to the internet and and dating apps and all this what i am seeing you guys is that black women are no longer equally yoked for black men i think this is what everybody is saying and the post that i am getting out here but nobody's really saying it it's like everybody is complaining. Black women are complaining about these black men and black men are complaining about these black women. But nobody's really saying the truth. T-Bird, Auntie is about to tell you guys the absolute truth. In my opinion, when I gather all of the data all of the information that you guys are saying, when I look at content from both men and women, I think I, I really do. I really do think I know the problem and what the solution is. I really do. And I think the solution is black women need to stop dating black men. I said it. If you are a black man, cut this video off right now because I promise you, you're going to be pissed off. If you are the type of person that you don't have an open mind to hear a difference of opinion, if you don't have an open mind to hear someone out who disagrees with you, turn the video off right now. Now, I'll give you guys a minute. Turn the video, if you're a black man, turn this video off. I promise you, if you're not open-minded, you're going to be pissed off at me. I don't care. But I don't want you to start your day off being pissed off, okay? Now, before we get started, you guys, be sure to hit the like, because this one is about to be heated. Be sure to hit the like button, like button, like button, because I'm about to drop a ton of just truth serum in this video, okay? And we're just going to speak directly. Please hit the like button, you guys, if you haven't already. Um, subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't already, put on the uh, notifications. Hit that bell button and put on the notifications so you guys know when I upload a video. Because as you guys can see, I can upload every day. Then I take a couple of days off and then I come back again. All right, let's get into this. I'm just going to shoot it straight, you guys. In my opinion, I think the real solution when it comes to the black race, men and women, and these gender wars, I really do think the real solution is that y'all need to stop dating each other. Yep. You guys need to stop dating each other. I'm not saying that you guys need to stop dating each other permanently, forever, but I am saying that for a time for some time give it a generation give it a decade okay I want to say just give it like like give it 10 years mm -hmm. I know you guys are like Tracy that's a long time I, I really do think I really do think that you guys need to stop dating each other mm -hmm. Black women and black men need to stop dating each other for a little bit. 
because you guys are really struggling out here and you guys really are not understanding and seeing what is really going on. You guys are complaining, complaining, complaining about each other. And I am continuing to see what is just so obvious that nobody is really talking about. Yeah, you guys are stating your complaints. The men are saying that the women are these boss chicks. The women are too independent. The women don't know how to be submissive. I keep hearing this word, submit. The women don't know how to submit. Men don't like a masculine man. This is what I'm hearing from black men. Men, a true masculine man does not like a boss chick. A true masculine man just wants this docile, submissive woman who lets her man lead. This seems to be the continued and common thread that these black men are saying. And then on the other end, the women are complaining, about, the black women are complaining about the black men saying that they are not competent. They don't deserve to lead a darn thing. That they are not going to submit to this man. This man is not a provider. He's not a producer. He's not a protector. I'm hearing a lot of these black women complaining and they're stating. I'm not making this stuff up, you guys. I'm listening to the streets and what they're saying. And these black women are like, these men are not protecting us. These men aren't even making that kind of money to be a provider. But these men want us to submit to them. They want us to say that we're going to let this man lead us. And as I'm listening to both camps, you guys. All I can think of, it's as blatant as blatant can be to me. I'm like, why don't you guys stop dating? See, I'm trying not to get excited. Why don't y'all stop dating each other? Date other races. I have always been a proponent. And you guys know, I have dated all of the rainbow. I always encourage other black women, date outside your race. And I get a lot of heat from black men because they like, wait a minute, no, no. But it's so funny because these same black men who don't want black women to date outside their race are completely for going to other countries and dating outside the race. And so I'm always trying to bring this to black women's attention. Like, the black man don't care nothing about dating uh, uh, outside his race? Why are you black woman so hell bent on only dating a black man? What they used to call it um, an IBM, an ideal black man are you waiting for this magical black man and I keep telling these sisters out here you're gonna be single mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I told you guys this is not the video I'm on like two cups of coffee so I am wired for sound we're gonna shoot it straight today stop dating black men ladies because you guys know what I am constantly seeing with the common thread. Ladies, take it from T-Bird. I have dated all races of men. And do you know what I know in my experience and what I don't see a lot of even out here with other people? I don't ever the, the non-black men that I have dated and been married to, they have never even used the word submit. I'm not kidding, ladies. 
I am not exaggerating at all. They never use the word submit. They never use the word, you gonna submit to me? I only hear that nonsense from black men. I told you guys, click off the channel if you're a black man, because we are going in today. I only hear, I'm not saying 100%, you guys, I don't know why I have to keep saying that. It's always going to be somebody. I don't know. I, I heard a white man say he want a submissive woman before. I did. I heard it. Okay, great. Good for you. I'm talking about the majority, you guys. The majority of the men that I hear and see out here talking about they want a submissive wife is black men. Black women are outnumbering black men in droves graduating college and university, being business owners, making the money, being entrepreneurs, being the breadwinner. Do you guys not see how that immediately changes and flips the script? This black woman now graduating from university at these large rates, she is not going to submit to you, black man. She's not. And even if she says the words, okay, I'll submit to you. Being the breadwinner, being a high earner, being a higher level educated woman, her personality oftentimes, her demeanor, her mannerisms, her behavior is not going to be indicative of a docile, submissive woman. And so you guys still are going to clash. Because even if she's like me, where she doesn't actually like say the words, boy, bye, or absolutely not. Even if she don't say the words, she's just going to have a mannerism about her. That's going to be like, no? Why? You're going to be the leader of me for what? Why? I lead my own thing. Can you guys not see the problem here? Can you not see the conundrum here? These black men are not making money like that. These black men are not graduating university like that. But yet they still want this woman from the 1940s and 50s. But the women have totally changed. She's the breadwinner now. She can buy her own house. She can go on her own trips. She can go uh, have hot girl summer with her girlfriends and, and they can go and take trips and travel together. I see a lot of the uh, ladies have uh, got really nice large channels on YouTube as solo travelers. They are doing it. They don't need this man. And yet these black women and black men continue to fight each other. And I'm looking like, this is as clear as clear can be, guys. Look at me getting excited. <laughs> Stop dating each other. Oh, my God. Black women, please listen to T-Bird when I tell you this. Please listen to Auntie when I tell you guys this. I have dated all races of men. The only race of man that has ever even said the word submit and I want a submissive woman or why aren't you submitting to me? It has always been a black man. It has always been a black man. No other race of man that I have ever dated has ever used that word with me. Ever. This is what I'm telling you, ladies. Stop dating them. Stop. Men. 
black men, if you're still listening, <laughs> stop dating black women. Because you're going to see too that these other races of women, unless you go out of the country, you're going to need to go out of the country. And when you go out of the country, and if you go to like an impoverished area, or what they call third world country, where the women don't have access to resources like we do over here in America, if you go to this, ladies, listen to me. I'm about to expose these these fools. They are they are they are making no nonsense. They want to continue to have you ladies jumping through hoops for them. They want to continue to have you guys constantly stroking their freaking egos and lifting them up and putting them up on pedestals, making them feel like a man. Bull crap. It's BS, ladies. It's a bunch of malarkey. I'm calling these dudes out. You guys know for a fact that most white men are, don't walk around talking about they want a submissive uh, woman. White men know. They come with that nonsense. These, these white women will eat them up. These white women are not submitting to these black dudes. Are you crazy? White women don't even submit to white men. Listen to all these stories out here. These white men be like, these white women, talk about the Me Too movement. Talk about real and true feminist movement. The white women have ran that. And the, and the black women later came along to support them, which is why, side note, white women, the same way that we as black women showed up and showed out with you guys, for our equal rights and the feminist movement, white women, you had better show up for Kamala Harris when it comes to this vote. You had better. I don't care if you got to lie to your man, sneak out the house like we used to do. You had better show up for Kamala Harris like we showed up with, uh, for you guys with the feminist movement. Okay, that was a side note. Now let me get back to my black women. Black women... These men are full of ish. These white men are not, uh, white women are not submitting to these men. White men don't even use that word. White men know dang well they look at you talking about, are you going to submit? That white woman will be like, who are you talking to? <laughs> Black men know this. Let me give you guys a, a, some more insight on this one, too. You know how a lot of these black men are going out here? I remember, oh, wow, that's that cyber uh, truck. But anyway, remember, you guys, um, if you ladies have been around for a little bit in the dating realm, you remember uh, not too long ago, black men would say, oh, no, 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 I'm not dating outside my race because it's this lady that I'm dating. She's not uh, white. She's Hispanic. She's a Latina. So therefore, I'm not, I'm not wrong. I'm not dating outside my race. She's Latina. She's not white. Bull crap. But let me tell you guys this. These same black men will try to act like, see, black women don't know how to submit. Black women don't know how to submit. That's why we go outside our race. Or that's why we go and date the Latina. Let me tell you guys what I know about a Latina. Haven't been around a lot of them. But especially since I've been living here in Las Vegas since 2016. This is, this is there. I don't know what the census is saying. But Las Vegas is ran by the Latino community as far as I'm concerned. I don't know if it's because, you know, it's not documented, that a lot of them may not be documented, but I'm telling you what I see out here on these streets. Las Vegas is ran by Latinos. This is their, look, 
as far as I'm concerned, this is their land. They are everywhere. Like, you really have to go, I don't know, maybe... Like, you really got to go far, 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 far west, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you got to go, like, out in Summerlin or, like, Centennial. I don't know, you guys. But what I'm saying is, like, in the actual Las Vegas City, Henderson area, where I'm usually in, North Las Vegas, what? Latinos run it. So let me tell you what I know being in Las Vegas since 2016, being around all of these Latino men and Latina women. I have worked with them. I, I'm, I'm talking to them in the grocery stores. Everywhere, like I said, everywhere I go, they, they are there. Like other black people, it's kind of rare. Latinos run it out here, you guys run it this is why I had to get the brilliant idea and switch up businesses and now I have a landscaping business what they run it you guys so I'm saying that to tell you that I am around Latina women all the time and when I tell you these women don't play okay see I'm trying not to get excited black women listen to me these black men are full of ish. I said it. These black men are full of it. Telling you, making you uh, black women feel like, you, you know, like there's something wrong with you because you don't want to submit to them. Making you feel like um, the issue is with you because you don't want to submit to them. They are full of it. These Latino women don't play I just had a meet. I just left a meeting with five different Latina women. I was the only black woman there. Talk about aggressive. Talk about assertive. Go getters. Business owners. We were all business owners. Okay. See, I'm trying not to get excited. These black men have been fooling you women. I'm sick of it. I am sick of it. Making you black women feel like, you, you know, you guys are too manly. You guys are expressing too much masculine energy. You guys don't know how to be feminine. You guys don't know how to be docile. You guys, are, you know, black women are so aggressive. These black men are full of ish. If I, oh boy, I wish this, I wish these were back in my cursing days. Just for this video, I wish these, I would, I would make sure that I wouldn't even be worried about no monetization. I wish just for this video, I could curse. But you guys know I don't curse anymore. Black men are full of ish. Stop dating them, black women. I said it. I told you guys. I'm not mincing any words in this one. Stop dating them. They are the only freaking ones out here talking about black women don't know how to submit. Don't no other race of man be talking about he want his woman to submit. Only black men come with that nonsense. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not going to marry you because you don't know how to submit. Dude, how am I supposed to submit to you when you don't even make enough money to be my provider? How am I supposed to submit to you when you don't even make enough money to, to take me around the world? To take trips to Europe? You don't even make enough money to take me to Paris. You don't even make enough money to buy me a Range Rover. So I have to work. But then you want me to submit to you. These black men are full of, full of it. Ladies, please stop listening to them. And as I have mentioned to you guys many, many, many times before, I don't care who you ladies are listening to. 
whether it's somebody online, whether it's somebody you're listening to them on their YouTube channel, whether it's somebody that you met in person. If he even says the word submit, run. That's not your dude. Not if you're not if you're an independent lady like myself. Yeah, if, if you like being docile and you just like to just kind of be laying up under a man and do everything he tells you to do, absolutely, go for it. You know, we're not all the same. But if you're a lady like myself, educated, highly educated woman, have your own high credit score, got money in the bank, got your own house, your own cars, Run your business. The word submit now, you guys, basically is like code word for, are you going to do what I tell you to do? Mm -hmm. I'm calling them out. I'm calling them out. It's code, ladies. For are you going to do what I tell you to do? Even if I'm not qualified to be the leader. Even if I am not capable or competent enough to be the leader of this family and household. Are you going to do what I tell you to do? Ladies, that's what submit means. I don't care how they try to candy coat it. I don't care how they try to, you know, dress it up. It's still a pig. They're putting lipstick on a pig and trying to tell you ladies that it's something else. Submit is code word for, are you going to do what I tell you to do? I told you. I'm telling you ladies right now what it means. Run. Don't have no discussion with him. Don't have a debate with him. Don't go, you know, what do you mean by submit? What, what, what does that mean? What do I need to do when you say submit? Don't even entertain the conversation, lady. T-Bird is telling you what he means. Ladies, please listen to me when I tell you. I'm talking to the black ladies. These other races of women here in the United States of America, I can't say what they're doing over in the actual Philippines. I can't tell you what they are actually doing in Brazil. I'm talking about races, all races of women. Most women here in these United States of America who have gotten a taste of independency. They're not doing all that submission. I actually have known a couple personally. Knew them well. It was a white man and a Filipino lady. I don't know if you guys know this, but Filipina ladies are apparently supposed to be known to be submissive known for it like they're 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 kind of known for also being like these like caregivers nurses you know just care for their man it is like apparently known for this filipina women i have known several men who spent time in the philippines and i've also heard different men of all races on their YouTube channel say that when they go to the Philippines, the women over there are like off the charts. If you want this like submissive woman, this like docile, cater to her man, you know, whatever you want, sir, looking down like the whole bit. Filipino women are known. And I'm if there's any Filipino women out there listening to me and you are not that way, I am sorry. I am I, I apologize. I am talking about 
what I have heard many men say when they go to the Philippines that this Filipina woman is very docile and they always use the word submissive. However, when these same men experience these Filipina women over in the Philippines, they are very docile women, very submissive women. But when they bring them over to the United States and they get a taste of that independency, and having a job and making their own money that submission mess goes right out the window this is why ladies pay attention this is why when you hear about like the passport bros and these guys this has been this has been a long 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 going statement or sentiment with with men of all races and when they go to these other like third world countries or impoverished areas and they get this submissive woman, that's, this is why they always say, and you'll even hear these, you know, current passport bros say, don't bring that woman back over to the United States. <laughs> hey. Look at Prada woman be in the uh, scene. These men will actually advise and tell each other, when you go over to this other country and you get your submissive woman, they always say, do not, warning, 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 warning. Do not bring your woman back to the States. Why? Because she's going to get with other American women She's going to start socializing and talking with other women born and raised in the United States. And we're going to tell her, girl, you do know you can get a job, right? You do know that you don't have to stay at home all day, right? You do know that you can start a business, right? You do know that you can like save your own money. And the minute they get and start co-mingling, with other women from America, from the United States, it's game over. I actually knew a situation where it was a white man and he had a Filipina wife. The Filipina, he then brought, mistake. <laughs> He then brought his Filipina wife back to the States. This lady ended up, you guys, starting her own business, becoming an entrepreneur. This man literally said, I, this is not hearsay. He told me, he said, his wife, he said, my wife is never home. She's never home. He says she's at her agency working all the time, night and day. This is a Filipino woman. I had a, another situation. Again, a white man went to the Philippines and got himself a Filipino woman, brought her back to the States. She got a little job like at some little store. It had to be close to home because he didn't want to give her a car. She, she went out and walked back and forth because it was close to her job. This man was trying to get her to quit her job because this lady just started like working overtime all the time. She was never home. So when these men try to tell you about these other ladies they just want to be submissive these are filipino women i'm telling you guys about the woman who is like number one known to be submissive when they get over here to the states and and start realizing they can have their own job making their own money they don't want to be up under that man anymore they don't want to be up under that man anymore this lady was working overtime. 
This is what he said. This is not hearsay. This is what she said. And he was literally saying, I don't know why. I don't know why she's just always at work. Because the place that she worked, you guys, was at like some like grocery store. So the man was like, you don't have to do all that overtime. And I was just kind of cracking up inside because they were having this discussion in front of us. And he was like, you don't have to do all that overtime. And she was like, yes, yes, I do. Because they need me and they need me. And he was like, see, I'm, I'm ready for you to quit that job. And I said right in front of him, I looked at her, I said, don't quit your job. Because I could, I could hear what she was saying without her actually saying it. I wanted to tell that man so bad, she don't want to be up under you. I know you went to the Philippines to get this lady thinking she was going to be submissive and docile and stay at home all day, every day, cooking and pleasing and catering you and stroking your ego and your eggplant. She got a taste of that freedom when she got that job. She was, this is not, I'm not assuming this. They actually said this, both of them. She was taken on other people's shifts. He literally said, every time somebody wants to call off or they want to go on vacation or they call off sick, they just automatically call my wife because they know that she's going to take the shift. That's how much she was working, you guys. What does that tell me? What should that tell you, lady? No woman just wants to be laying up under her husband all day, every day. Being at his beck and call. The minute this lady got a little bit, a taste of freedom of having her own job, she was out of there. She was telling him, oh, you know, I just want to do this, you know, because people need me. They need me at the job. They need me at the job. Now, this part she did not say, but this is just what Source was telling me. This is what I was reading off of their dynamic and, and as I was watching them, because you guys know I'm a people watcher. I just sit back and listen. And as they were having this dialogue in front of us, I was just looking at them. And I was listening to what they weren't saying. This is what you guys have to do. Listen to what they're not saying. And what she wasn't saying and what he wasn't saying was that this lady enjoys being away from you, sir. This lady don't want to be at home all day cooking you food all day. Just sitting around waiting for you to take her to the bedroom. The minute she got a taste of freedom, you guys, she was taking overtime shifts on a very regular basis to the point where she was just only coming home grabbing something to eat uh sleeping for you know seven or eight hours and then she would be back at work you could tell that her work family was where she'd rather be i have another situation Again, a Filipina lady. And at one point, we were staying in um, these apartments before we uh, purchased another house. And there was this couple that stayed right across from us in this apartment. I used to call the apartment my vacation home. And it was a white man again and a Filipina lady. He went to the Philippines to get this lady. What they call a... Um, what was the term for that? A mail order uh, bride. He brought her home. This is what I'm telling you guys. I'm not talking about hearsay. This is stuff that I actually experienced. firsthand. He went to the Philippines, the Philippines to get this Filipina lady. He married her. He brought her back to the States. They were staying across the hall from us in these uh, apartments that we were staying in. She would always just kind of have her head down like this. Every time we would see them in passing, coming up and down the steps, in the parking lot. Hi, hi. She's like this, because she's standing next to her man. Hi, hi. One day I was coming home and he was gone. He was at work. And I was coming down the hallway 
And I'm I'm not one to make a lot of noise. So I suspect she was probably looking through the people. <laughs> she knew I lived across the hall. She saw me coming down that hall by myself, you guys. She hurried up and opened the door. It kind of startled me. I was like, whoa. whoa. And I saw her. She's standing about maybe five feet tall. Little lady. Little, little petite little lady. Cute. She said, oh. She spoke almost no English. She hi, hi, hi. She opened the door. Hi. I said, she said, hi, hi, hi. I thought the lady was, I thought somebody was, I was like, oh, you, you guys know I was ready to call 911. I was like, what's wrong? And she was like, come, come, come. And I was like, uh, okay. And she was like, come inside, come, come inside. And I was like, okay. And I went inside her apartment. They had this, they had a, uh, um, they had like a two story um, apartment. I don't know what do you call that, a townhouse at that point. But they had a two story. We just had a one level, and it was so cute. And I remember I kind of went in. And I was like looking. I was like, oh my god, it's so cute in here. And so then she said, come inside. And I came inside, and she said, Tracy. And I said yes. And I don't remember what her name was. I wouldn't say it anyway. But um, she said, come and say, sit. She pulled out a chair. She said, sit, sit, sit with me. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. Tea, you want tea? And she made me some tea. And then she showed me these beautiful, um, these beautiful, what do you call this? Is this called a dolly? But it's like these little, is that a dolly you guys where you take those things is that called a spoolie or something and you take it looks like uh, that thing that you clean something with but it's long kind of like a, a mascara brush but it's long and continued and she she had a way that she took this and she would make it into like a dress like make form it. Have you guys, do you guys know about this? She would form it into like a whole body of a lady with a dress on. And these little spooly things, I know this is probably not the right word, you guys. She would have in different colors, but she could form and manipulate this wire in such a way that she could make it into like a, make it look like a lady in a dress. Or she could make it look like a duck. Maybe she would get the spoolie in, in yellow and she could make it into a duck. Or she could very very creative or she could make the spoolie uh if it was green she would make it into a frog and what she was doing you guys was making these things and what you're supposed to do is use it to put on top of like your um dish detergent soap so you like put it on top of the bottle that kind of just looks you know industrial but you would put this thing on top of it and it was like this decorative dress if you will on top of your like um dish detergent bottle it was so freaking creative and she had them all lined up you guys it looked like she had been working on these things for months she had them all lined up and they were in her window sill they were on shelves all in the um in the living room and so me being a business-minded person i immediately was like uh you can i said do you sell these and she said no she said here. And she did like this, you guys. Now she said, "Here, you guys. This is this is Desi. This is uh, Desi is this teddy bear that my husband gave me when we were dating for Valentine's Day years ago. But anyway, and I keep it here in the car. It's so cute. But anyway, I'd be like, come on, Desi, let's go for a ride.' But she was like this, you guys. She was like, "No, this is for you." I was like, "For me?" And she was like, "Yes, you." I said, "How much?" I said, yes, how much? She said, no, I give you as a gift. Oh my God, you guys, can you guys picture this lady? She was so freaking cute. She was like, I'll give you this. She said, no, gift for you, a gift. I said, for me? And she said, yes. Come on, uh, Prada. She said, yes. I said, oh my God. I said, thank you so much. We sat there, you guys, and we talked, and we talked, and we talked, and we talked. She spoke very little English, but we were, like, doing a lot of, like, verbal cues and using our hand motions and, and this and that. She was trying to take me upstairs to their bedroom and everything. I was like... <laughs>
at the time, the guy that I was with, he was like, what were they trying to do? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. But I did not go up into their bedroom. But she was like, <laughs> That's so funny that that's the first thing that me and my uh, ex at the time, that's the first thing we thought when she was uh, trying to take me up to the bedroom. Like, who knows? She probably had more of the little spooly things that she wanted to show me. But the first thing that I thought was, this girl trying to have a threesome? <laughs> okay, just get down. Just get down, glasses. Just go. <laughs> Thank you. You guys, I, that's the first thing I thought of was that this lady was trying to get me up to her room, but she was. She was trying to get me up to the bedroom, but I was like, no, no. She said, you want to do I was like, I, I, I was like, no. And then also her husband wasn't there. So I was like, uh-uh, no baby. I don't want this man coming home. And then we just so happened to be coming out of that bedroom up there. I was like, that's going to be a no, ma'am. That's going to be a no. But anyway, you guys, the point is, she had all of these, I wish I knew the name of these things. I'm just going to say Dolly for the sake of the video. All around the house. On shelves all around the house. It, it, the, what it appeared to be, you guys. And living across the hall from them for six months. And how little I saw her. And when I saw all these dollies all around the house and on the shelves and window sills in her um, in her townhouse, the first thing I thought and what it appeared to be is like this man was trying to keep her locked up in this apartment. He didn't want her socializing with uh, other American women. I think he had got the memo too. Okay, you come to the Philippines and get you a bride. You can do the whole mail order bride thing. Sure. Don't let these, don't let your Filipino woman communicate with no American woman. Don't do it. Because they knew too that even the most submissive of submissive women will switch on you and become independent. And once she get a taste of that independency, she's out of there. Whether she divorces the man or do like these other relationships that I told you guys about. She's just never there. She's just never home anymore. And both of these men said that these, those first two examples, that these two Filipino women, when they first got here to the States, they used to be home all the time. And yet, this Filipina woman who's known to be submissive, once she started talking and communicating with other American women, and especially once she got a taste of working and making her own money, shift a 180. A 180. So these black men can go somewhere. When they talking about, oh, the black woman don't know how to submit. These other women are not submitting either, ladies. Not here in the United States. This is why these men are saying they leave in the country, passport bros. You know what? When these men say, oh, I'm leaving the country. Oh, these women in the United States don't know how to act. You know what you ladies should be saying? Bye. I see a lot of ladies in these men's comment section. They talking about passport bros and they leaving the country and they gonna go find them a woman in one of these other countries who know how to submit. And I see these women in their comment section going back and forth. Ladies, stop going back and forth with these men. You should be saying goodbye. I know several of these men have YouTube channels. At least I can respect the, the men who have actually left. This is why I tell, say to you guys all the time about MGTOW. I'm like, go then. If you're men going your own way, why are you, you're supposed to be men who no longer want to deal with women, but yet you're still making videos about women. Why don't you go? 
If you're one of these men and you're talking about, oh, I'm leaving the country because these women here, they too independent. They boss bees. At least I can respect the passport bros who are gone. Bye. At least they, they had the gumption and the courage and were disciplined enough to save up the money to leave. When I see ladies going back and forth, debating these passport bros, I'm like, why? Let them leave. At least I can respect the men and the passport bros who have left. You guys know that I have an 18 year old son. I'm always encouraging him. I'm like, you need to call, you need to travel. Save up your money not to buy some more merchandise or something. You should save up your money so you can travel. Get out of the United States. See how other cultures live. Go, go look and be around other types of people. You guys also know that living here in Las Vegas, all of my son's girlfriends or people he's dated, maybe except for one, maybe one was a white girl, but all the other ladies are Latinas. They're, they're Hispanic girls. I always kind of joke around with him. I'm like, you got a type. You got a type. And he's like, no, I don't. No, I don't. He's like, mom, I don't have a type. It's just that that's what I'm around. That's what's, that's what's around me in school. That's what's around me as I'm going out and about. It's, you know, predominantly um, Latina women or girls. I love that for him. I'm always like, what are you learning? What are you learning? Like, do you get to go to her house? What do you know about her parents? You know, things like that. I love that for my son. So any uh, black men out there listening to me, I'm not saying only black women should start dating outside their race. I think you guys should too. This is what I started off the video saying. I think give it a decade, you guys. Yeah. I think when you give it at least a decade of dating only non-black women and non-black men, I think one or two things are going to happen. You guys are going to realize that what you want in a mate, you found it in a non-black person. Or, second option, you guys are going to get out there and you're going to date non-black people and you're going to realize and appreciate your fellow black gendered person more. You're going to start appreciating them more. This is why I say, ladies, let them go. Because when these black men go out there and even when they do go to these other countries, oftentimes, you guys, the reason, this is the other thing that the, it just seems so obvious and blatant to me, but I don't see why you guys don't see this. For example, these passport bros. The reason why they enjoy their lifestyle so much when they're able to go to these like third world countries or these impoverished areas is because they are making the U.S. dollar, but they're going to these like third world countries where the economy there is a lot less expensive. So say for instance, like we talked about on a previous video, say for instance, this guy is making 40 or $50,000 here in, you know, with the dollar. And as we know, $43,000 here is like peanuts. And not only is it peanuts, but most women here are like, we can't survive off of $43,000 a year. And so the woman has to work. Therefore, she's a boss bee. She got her thing going on. Think about it, ladies. When they take that same $40,000 and go to a third world country, go someplace like Colombia, go someplace like Brazil, go someplace like the Philippines, 
you guys now just like that this this dude is like a millionaire and the only thing he had to change was his location so now ladies do you see then why these ladies then in these other countries then look to these men like oh wow you make it all the bucks because forty thousand dollars is a lot of money in these other countries but this is the reason why they have to stay in that other country they can't bring that woman back here even if she was born and raised in that third world country the minute she gets over here in america the minute she comes over here to the united states and she starts socializing communicating conversing with other women from the united states she's going to start seeing what they got seeing all the jewelry they wearing seeing all the nice houses they have seeing all the nice cars that they're driving and she's going to want the same thing but the dude only makes forty three thousand dollars a year and she's not going to be able to get it and she is going to become dissatisfied with this man this is why they have to stay in those countries the other reason why i think that black men and black women need to stop dating each other for a while I know you guys, this sounds so unorthodox and you guys are like, no Tracy, but what about black love? What about struggle love? If you guys want to continue to be in struggle love, go, go for it, go for it. T-Bird is just trying to give you a different perspective of why black women and black men should stop dating each other for a while. One, because this black man is oftentimes the man who wants you to submit. And black woman, we, we, most of us, we're not submitting to this man. Not making $43,000 a year. We're not submitting to him. We're not submitting to this dude. And he, he can't barely uh, pay the bills. We're not about to let this dude be our leader. And this dude got a, 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 a 400, 500 credit score. Zero dollars in the bank. Can't put his hands on a thousand dollars right now. Why are you going to let this man be your leader? Reason number one, you guys, why black women need to stop dating black men. Because we do not want to submit to them. And black men want a woman to submit to them. We're not doing it. So stop dating them. Number two reason why black women need to stop dating black men is because their money, they live forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, is not enough over here in the United States for him to be the provider. Whereas if he goes over to these other countries and date these other type of women. He can then be seen as literally like the king of the castle. Because his $50,000, $40,000 over in that country, he really is like making a lot of money to these women. Let them go. Stop fighting and debating, trying to keep them here. Let these men go. But reason number three why I think black women need to stop dating black men and the thing that most people I do not hear talking about this. The programming and the mindset of this black man. The other races of men don't have, you guys. Meaning the programming of always struggle, struggle, struggle. Whether these black men admit it or not, they kind of always feel like they on guard. You see a lot of videos and content where these black men are always talking about, you know, being profiled. I'm not saying this is right or wrong or if it happens to them or not. What I am saying is that this is what they say is occurring. So their life 
to me, just seems like a struggle. They getting profiled out here in the streets. They're being uh, treated unfairly when they go to work. People talking to them disrespectfully just because they're a black man. You know, Karens are out here telling on them all the time. Everybody sees the black man as a threat, a monster, a predator. I'm not saying any of this stuff is right or wrong, you guys. I'm just saying this is what the black man oftentimes is going through. Like life is just really, really hard for him. This is what he's saying. I told you guys, I listen to a lot of these, these in sales just to kind of see what they're going through, what they're talking about. This is what they're saying. Like things are so unfair for them. Like life is just really, really hard. It is a struggle. This is where this term struggle love came from. You know, this black man wants this black woman to be with him and they struggle together. Ladies, we don't want to struggle. I, I personally, you, you do you, uh, black woman. But I, per, I personally don't want to be with someone where I got to listen every day about the struggle. I just don't. I don't. I'm, I, I'm just being honest. I don't. I don't want to listen to every day you coming home talking about how you were mistreated. I don't want to date any race of man who's just so negative and every day he just complaining. But it seems to be that this is really pronounced in the black community and amongst black men where they're always talking about the struggle. The white man holding them down. The white man keeping him from, you know, climbing the ladder. You know, and then the minute that you go and suggest, well, if you don't like working for that company anymore, why don't you start your own business? What? Now they thinking that you black woman, you don't understand it. You don't understand his plight. I don't want to talk about the struggle every day, you guys. That's just me personally. I find it to be very, um, I just find it to be very sad. I just find it, to, you, you bring it down my vibe. And you guys know I am all about the laughter and having fun. So you guys can see now why somebody like me, I had to stop dating black men a long time ago. I don't want to talk about your struggle. I remember I, when I was in my single season, I had dated this black guy. And again, he just came out the gate talking about, are you going to submit to me? I was like, you clearly don't know who you're talking to. Absolutely. I said, no. But because he didn't want to stop dating me, he wanted to keep going on and trying to convince me of why I should submit to him and why, you know, back in the day, the women used to submit. And I was like, that's back in the day. I'm living in today. I don't submit to nobody. I am source. I am the creator. What you look like asking me to submit to you and your program. This is what I say to you ladies. When you get this relationship with Source and when you wake up and remember who you are. The minute a man says submit to you, you should be repulsed. Submit to you. I am Source. Submit to you for what, sir? Ladies, stop dating these black men. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. Stop dating them. And stop listening to them when they're trying to tell you ladies that, you know, black women don't know how to submit. I see these Latina women all day, every day. These women don't play. I was an independent go-getter. I'm not about to listen to you talk that nonsense to me. 
these Latina women out here, I don't know how they are and where you live, but here in Las Vegas, these are some head strong, independent business owners running the show. And you guys know that my husband is a Latino. That was one of the first conversations we had. I was like, how are the women in your country? He's like, what do you mean? And I started asking him more about this whole, I didn't even want to say the word submit because I didn't even want to bring that word to him. But I was just like, are they pretty independent, you know, about their business? And he's from El Salvador. He said the women in El Salvador don't play that mess. They have jobs. They go out and work. They earn. They are doing their thing. The town that um, we're looking to buy some more land in. He was like, the, the governor in that town is a lady. She's been a lady. These women here in Las Vegas, these Latina women, I'm telling you, you guys, listen to T-Bird. They not walking around here with their head down, to, you know, going to their little Latino man talking about, what, what can I do? I, you want me to just cook? And talk about mouthy. Ladies, black women, you know how these black men will try to tell black women, y'all too mouthy. Y'all always got something to say. Always want to be combative. Always, They don't know combative. These Latino women, they will go off on a man right here in the grocery store. They don't give a dog on. They will be right inside of Whole Foods, La Bonita, Smith's. <laughs> My husband be like, Ooh, you're having a disagreement. <laughs> I am not exaggerating. A couple of years ago, I saw these two Latina women. They got into this fight right in front of me. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. My heart was hurting. You guys know, because you guys know, I, 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 don't, I don't do well with physical altercation. I just don't. It just, it just bothers my soul. I don't know if it's because I'm just such a loving, compassionate person to see like right in front of me, not in a ring, like at a boxing match down there at the uh, casino, but to see it, two people actually physically, and I can hear the physical, uh, my soul was, uh, was hurting you guys. It was two Latina women. Talk about aggressive. Talk about assertive. Talk about voices raised and arguing with their man. I have seen it more times than I can even remember or count. Ladies, if you want to see what I'm talking about, go to a Latina community, a Latino community in your area. Watch them in their grocery stores in their restaurants just look at the women's demeanor there is nothing i'm not saying that there's no docile latina women what i am saying is what i see around here in las vegas these women are not walking around with their heads down talking about this latino man is her is her leader and she submits to everything he says these black men are feeding you ladies garbage it's a lie it is a straight up lie. I see these young girls, you guys know it wasn't that long ago when Gary was in uh, high school. And I would sit and wait for him to get out of school or when I would drop him off. These young girls, they was dressing uh, uh, in um, uh, sneakers. They had better uh, tennis shoes and Jordans than the dudes did. Talk about masculine energy. I remember.
remember it was one girl I had saw in the parking lot and I was like oh they uh, um I said Gary do you know her and I said is she in your class and he said yeah she's in my grade and I said what I said why why don't you approach her and he's like no I said she's cute I said why not he said oh no he said no 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 he said that's the type of girl that will get you caught up in all kinds of drama this is what Gary said going to school with these girls he said she's always in fights at school. He said, and she and she run with a pack of guys. And he said, um, he said, no, she will get you caught up in some drama. And next thing you know, he was like, it'll be a full on fight. He said, this this girl could get you hurt. This is what my son said. I I have watched these Latina women. There is nothing submitted submissive about them. Don't let these black men fool you. They want you to submit to them because to me, now at this point, I told you guys three reasons of why I think black women and black men need to stop dating each other and why we are no longer equally yoked. One, because these black men want you guys to submit to them and we're not doing that. This is the modern day woman. Stop fighting about it. Stop arguing with these men. And ladies, do, do me a favor on this one too. Stop asking another black man what you need to do to obtain a black man. Don't you guys see the same thing they all are saying to you? They want you guys to be submissive and learn how to fall back and let them take the lead. Let them be your leader. They all say the same thing. Two, the reason why you guys need to stop dating these black men is because here in the United States, their $43,000 is peanuts. And they can't be your provider that you guys say you're looking for. Let them go over and out of the United States so that they can date a woman from a third world country, an impoverished woman, where his $43,000 will go a long way. Let him go. Stop arguing with him. Let him go. Let him go enjoy life and see what it's like. But three, and I think this is the most important one, of why you guys need to stop dating black men. They want you to be in a struggle love relationship. They're saying that you guys don't know how to sit and listen to them talk about their plight, their struggle. Racism. The unfairness of it all. That's what they want you guys to do. But do you guys see how difficult that is for a black woman who's also black but she done fought her way through it because she's so aggressive and assertive and, and, and exerts those type of masculine energy traits she done fought her way through it though not to say that we as black women don't experience any racism it's just that we have learned how to maneuver around it graduating university and college Getting these really, really good jobs, paying a lot of money, or starting our own businesses, getting paid a lot of money. We're buying our own cars, buying our own houses, able to do our own traveling. We can do everything for ourselves. But this black man still wants you to sit and listen to his plight and his struggle every day. And you lady may be sitting there thinking to yourself, I, I had to struggle too, but I, I worked I worked through it. I worked through it. I found a way. I got a I got a grant. I got a loan. I took out a loan. I I, I did this. I, I found a way. And now you this boss chick that they talking about. But ladies, what you don't realize. 
is that the minute we became boss chicks, this man now, whether he admits it or not, ladies, black woman, the minute you became independent, making your own money, capable of buying your own car, your own house, can take your own self on these beautiful trips and travel. Do you guys not see that immediately made you, black woman, this black man's competition? Because whether he says it or not, he now looking at you like, ain't this about a be? He's supposed to be the provider, protector, producer. And now here you are going to the Pow Pow range. Now here you are with the 800 credit score. Now here you are with the luxury car that you got all on your own. Oh, you guys, it's getting hot. I'm gonna move a little bit so I can, uh, plus I need to go into Whole Foods, you guys. And so I'm going to, um, I'm gonna try to wrap this up. <laughs> but until I wrap this up, you guys, let me move. Matthew because the sun moved and it was like beating directly down on me. So let me move Matthew real quick for you guys. So I can finish this up. Hopefully without the camera going out again. Um, so the facts are the facts, you guys. The facts are the facts. It just, it, this is why I'm always telling you guys about life. It is what it is. We don't need to be complaining about this anymore. Stop fighting with these dudes. I see you you ladies out here, you're, you're trying to fight with the man, trying to, trying to um, convince him of your point of view. And then the men are out here fighting with the ladies, trying to convince uh, them of his struggle and his pain. And trying to convince this woman, you need to submit. And then they come with all, you know, because 1940s and the 1950s and, and the women are going, but it's 2024, sir. It's 2024, sir. We're not going back. <laughs> I love when I hear Kamala say that in her speeches. We are not going back. Get over it. Ladies, stop asking these relationship coaches and, and, and um, these guys on YouTube. They are clearly telling you guys. They want a woman who submits. They don't like these boss uh, women, boss chicks. They don't like this independent woman. They don't like this modern day woman. Uh, the, the the ladies are, are too aggressive, too assertive, and too masculine acting. You don't know how to be a super feminine woman and let him take the lead. They they keep telling you ladies the same thing. Why aren't you listening to them? And if you know that you're not willing to submit to these men. Let a man with a, a 500 credit score take the lead. Let a man who got a negative 400 in his, his checking account take the lead. Stay at home, cook and clean, and lay up under him and be at his beck and call if you know you don't want to be that lady why do you keep asking these men, black men, what they want? Why? It's the same thing. If you don't want to do that or be that, keep it moving. But more importantly, that I want to say to you ladies, start dating outside your race. Look, we, the people who date outside their race, we don't have these problems. I've dated multiple white men. Multiple. They have never. They have never used the word submit to me. Never. Even when I brought that up to them because I was hearing this online that the men were saying they want a woman to submit. These white men were like, what? The, the white men that I dated. They were like, 
what? What does that mean? They literally were asking me. They were like, what do they mean when they say that? And I explained it to them. And they were like, what? I had one white man even say to me, he was like, we're in 2024. I guess he was so used to dating white women. He was like, white women don't do that. <laughs> now, now the black men have graduated and because they know white women. Back in the day, they used to say, oh, white women will do anything you want them to. They don't say that anymore. Pay attention to it, ladies. They don't say white women anymore because they know white women, white women will curse you out. You try to tell her to submit. She'll probably report you and try to file a lawsuit. <laughs> These black men don't play that nonsense with white women. And I'm telling you right now, they don't play that mess with no Latina woman either. She not having that nonsense. Latina woman will look you, most of them, that I have encountered, that I see around here in Las Vegas come to her with that mess talking about submit to me she might submit that latina woman might submit to a white man why because that white man may be making all this money so she like oh okay yeah i'll do that for you i sure will this latina woman is not submitting to this black man out here with your little forty three thousand dollars a year i'm sorry i'm not trying to be disrespectful I'm, I'm really trying. <laughs> I am really trying not to be disrespectful to this black man. I really am. But this is why I even tell my own son, who's a black young man, I said, you need to concentrate on your money. Period. Period. These girls will follow. Don't you worry about getting no girl. They will follow the money. <laughs> as long as you're making money and can provide for yourself and can take care of yourself and you're a good-hearted person like he is, Gary is such a sweet, humble young man. He's not a, a, a pushover, you guys, but he's just a, he's, he's man. he has a lot of masculinity about him. The voice, the height, he has it all. But he's just a very, just a kind and a very generous person. And I'm always like, Gary, now that you're, you're coming into adulthood, let me tell you what you need to concentrate on. Don't concentrate on getting a, a girl. Concentrate on making your money. The girls will follow. So I'm not trying to disrespect you, black man. I have a black son. But I need you to know. The only reason that you can pull a, a lady who's going to submit to you and be docile to you in those other third world countries is because they are third world countries. Those are impoverished women. They are gonna say and do whatever you ask them to do just to get to your dollar. And you know this, which is the reason why you don't bring them back to the United States. And if you do bring them back to the United States, you do like that one white man did at that apartment and you try to keep them locked up in an apartment or a house and tell them don't go nowhere. <laughs> you guys should have seen the one uh, Filipina lady. Her husband ended up coming home while I was still there. The look on this white man's face was like, one, A look on his face you guys not of racism he had a look on his face looking at his little Filipino woman like did I did I tell you <laughs> this white man came back to that apartment he looked at that little Filipino lady and he had this look on his face like, he didn't say it, you guys, but you guys know I can read people. 
he had this look on his face when he looked at her. He was looking like, did I tell you you could have company? And she immediately, you guys, when she heard that key in that door, or no, we didn't have keys. We had the do 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 look cold. When she heard that, boop, 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 and that door handle went, she jumped up because we were sitting there having tea. She jumped up. Hi, hi, hi. I suspect that she probably was supposed to get me out of there before he got home. And he didn't say it, you guys, but he gave her this look like, who is this and why is she in this house? Why is she in this, this apartment? Because she immediately started explaining. She was like, this is, this is Tracy, Tracy. She, remember, she stayed across, she stayed across hall. She stayed across and, and she came and I was showing her, I was showing her the dolly. I was showing her the dolly. I give her dolly, I give her dolly. And, the, and, and he was like, he, he was still looking kind of very serious. He was like, okay. And I immediately was like, oh my God, they're so pretty. I love them. I said, she has so many. I said, she needs to sell these. And I, the minute I said sell, I was like, do you know about Etsy? Do you know about Etsy? But now I'm talking to him because now he speaks English, right? He's American. And I was like, she needs to sell these on Etsy. She can make so much money, baby. That white man looked at me and he was like, no, she's she doesn't sell them. Serious as hell. And I looked that white man right in his eyes. And I said, why not? He was like, oh, she just does it. She just she just does it for fun. You could tell that white man was like, get the hell out of my apartment. You cute and all, but get out. <laughs> Don't you dare try to come up in here and tell my little Filipina submissive woman how to set up an Etsy and sell her product. Ma'am, you get your little American self out of here. <laughs> now go. And just in case you guys think that I'm being far-fetched. My husband at the time was a white man. And he said the same thing. He said he knows all about these men and how they go over to the Philippines and get this woman. And how they don't really like to bring them back to the States. But if they do bring them back to the States... They like to kind of keep them confined and don't let them get out socializing too much. And when I told my my uh, mate at the time what happened, he was like, uh, no, he, I'm sure he didn't like that at all. This was coming from a white man. He was like, no, he, he, he don't want his woman to start making money. He don't want, want her to get a taste of the independence. When we moved out of those apartments, you guys, I wanted to get her number. And my ex at the time was like, don't do that. And I was like, why? He said, her husband is not going to like that. Don't do that. He said, plus she barely speaks English. He said, what are you guys, he said, what are you guys gonna talk about? And I was like, I can teach her more English and, and I can go to lunch and, and I can pick her up because she too, just like that other couple, that man made sure she did not get a driver's license. She did not have a car. I was like, I can come pick her up. I want, I want, because we were moving. And I was like, I'll come back over here and I'll come pick her up. And he was like, but, but he's like, her husband's not going to like that. This was coming from a white man. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get her number. I didn't want any beef. I didn't want no problems. 
but you could tell that that little Filipino lady really wanted a friend. I still probably should have went back over there now that I think about it. But I just didn't want any problems, right? So anyway, let me say this to you guys. Black women, stop dating black men. I know that sounds abrasive as hell. But I just cannot mince words with you guys anymore. Listen to what these black men are saying. It's plenty of content out there. You guys constantly are asking them their advice. They tell you the same thing. They don't like boss chicks. They don't like this modern day woman. They don't like independent women. They don't like these women um, exerting all of this masculine energy. This go-getter assertive aggressive energy. Now can you guys see, they now also, in addition, see you guys as competition. Why wouldn't they, you guys? You're making the same amount of money as them, if not more. You have the good credit score. You have money in the bank. You have the nice luxury cars. You have the nice houses and condos. Can you guys not see now where this black man is coming from? He's like, what do you need me for? And you ladies might be saying, well, they they have good eggplant. We, we still need their eggplant. But if you guys are... Hold on, bit, Tracy. I love to laugh, you guys, but I don't want to laugh and then make you guys think that I'm not serious. I am serious, but it's just so funny to me. Because I think that even the black guys know we don't we don't really need you for your eggplant either so. guys I think deep down you know that too we can go get a vibrator hopefully I can say that word we can go get a vibrator and take care of our needs like that if we wanted to if we wanted to so we don't really even need you for your eggplant either most women have stated that they don't even climax through intercourse it's like a clitorial thing you guys which is why the vibra the vibrators are so popular you guys remember the rabbit they were sick they couldn't keep them on the shelves the rabbit I'm not saying that a woman doesn't need a man you guys I'm just saying we don't need you but we want one but you guys that's a huge shift in the past we like literally needed to have a man but now we don't and you guys they know it and and they're feeling um, useless worthless hopeless List. Mm -hmm. because they have been reigning supreme for so long in the patriarchy that they cannot wrap their minds around the fact that they are no longer actually needed and that now there's a shift in the paradigm and it's like no women don't need you but we want you yeah 
But now the men know that they got to step their game up. You got to step your game up. Now you need to present to me. Why should I want you? You need to present to me. Why should I include you in my life? You guys, this is a really hard pill for these men to swallow. Because they see you and they're like, you got everything. And deep down, really not that deep down, they know that you don't need them for their eggplant either. You can satisfy yourself in 30 seconds, bam, with your vibrator. They know this. So because they know that you, we don't really need them, they're trying to be so combative. They're like in this combative toddler state, if you will. Trying to fight the system, fight the system. They're trying to fight the movement. They're trying to fight the progression because they're just basically trying to figure out their place in our lives. But ladies, I really do feel like you need to let them go. Stop fighting with them. They, they, they coming up with whole spreadsheets, dissertations, PowerPoints of, of what all this woman have done and y'all need to stop. Y'all need to stop it and you need to submit. You need to submit, darn it. Come on, guys, submit to us. And they know they are losing the battle. They know they are, ladies. Have some compassion. They know they are losing the battle. And the more you ladies keep trying to feed into their nonsense, the longer it's taking them to make the shift. This is why I say to you ladies, let them go. Let me tell go, let the men go. Let the passport bros go. You, black woman, need to start dating outside your race. Because as I mentioned, you're going to figure out one or two things. Either, oh my God, the grass really is greener on the other side. I really don't have to deal with all this nonsense that this black man was taking me through. Or, you're going to get over there and say, ah, it was cool, it was alright, but I prefer to be with a black man. And then when you come back, you're going to be more appreciative of that black man. But for now, in 2024, with all these gender wars and all this struggle that you guys are going through, black people, stop dating each other. I said it. Stop dating each other. Go experience something new and different. You might like it. And at the very least, if you don't like it, you'll come back with more appreciation for your black men. Me personally, once I jumped ship, I never went back. That was um, 2015 maybe. I never went back. I was done. I was done. Been there, done that. I, I just experienced that for me and my lifestyle, being a boss chick, like they call us now, a modern day woman, a progressive woman, a go-getter type of woman, a non-submitted woman, a non-submissive woman. A woman who believes that her mate should be her partner, not her leader. For me and my lifestyle, ladies, a black man has no place in my world. Not as my man. Not as my husband. He just doesn't fit into my puzzle. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the black man I'm just saying for me and my lifestyle and the type of lady that I am the black man in 2024 he has no place in my life not as my husband 
he's going to cause me more headache than I'm willing to tolerate. You guys know I, I deal with zero drama from any man. But I'm definitely not going to be that woman in that struggle love with you. Absolutely not. I don't want to hear about it. I don't. You want to come home and talk to me about something you manifested? I love the vocabulary that my husband uses. When he says that we picked up a new client, a new commercial lot, he's like, baby, this is the kind of conversations I have with my Latino husband. This is coming from a man that if he wanted to, being a Latino, being born and raised in El Salvador, if he wanted to, he could talk about the struggle too. He could talk about racism too. He could talk about how people look down on him too. My husband does not have that type of conversation. My husband be about his money. This man is up every day before the sun. <laughs> Oftentimes coming home right before it gets dark. All day, every day. It's not even in his vocabulary to be speaking about some racism or somebody called him some slur. What? Like what? He's like, I'm talking. I got a new client and his vocabulary is literally like, baby, guess what I manifested today? And I'm like, what? And he's like, I got five new clients. I'm like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> I'm like, you are pure genius. I hear these men, they're like, these black women, they don't know how to uh, compliment a man. They don't know how to let him, uh, you know, encourage a man. Let me explain something and say this to you guys. When a man is doing what he's supposed to do, it's just natural for us to be like, dang! All of my exes could tell you that about me. When you that dude exuding masculine energy like that, I'll compliment you on everything. I'd be like, you put that table together. Oh my God. Oh my God. And it's not fake. It's literally like, because I'm like looking at the table and all the parts and screws and I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to deal with that. And so I'll literally be like, wow, that is amazing. My husband don't talk that mess. Coming home talking about some struggle. Somebody done called him a name. You can call my husband a slur if you want to. That man, one, he probably don't know what the hell you're talking about. And two, he would laugh. My husband would laugh at you and be like, okay. <laughs> Go get his money. Hear about his money. He about to be sitting up here complaining about some client talk to him crazy or reckless. He'll be like, yeah. He'll say something like uh, a client was dissatisfied. And I'll be like, okay, what happened? And he said, oh, this happened, this happened. He said, oh, but I fixed the problem. I fixed the problem, no problem, no problem. I have so much respect for him. Sometimes these, these clients would just be talking to him crazy. And he'll be like, okay, I will fix it. I will fix it, no problem, no problem. My baby like, I ain't about to be losing no client just because she had a bad day today. All he see is this is money. I mean, you really got to be. Now, I, I have seen him tell uh, maybe three clients since we started this business. Maybe three or maybe two. I have seen him say, baby, I had to tell the, the lady no more. This is, this is the last month. No more service, okay? Find, find a new... Find a new landscaper. Two. And when he tells me he had to tell a client that this is going to be the last month that we service you, I already know. 
that person had to be so freaking obnoxious. That person had to be so combative and disrespectful to my husband in order for him to say, this is the last month. <laughs> he, it just not even his nature. Ladies, when you date outside your race, you ain't got to, you, you don't have to deal with all that struggle and them struggle conversations. It, I, I'm going to make a whole separate video about dating outside your race and the different qualities that I have found from different men of different races and the reasons of why. Maybe that'll be the title. Look out for that video. The reasons why you black woman should date outside your race. Stop complaining about these black men and let these black men go. Let them go figure it out. Stop trying to hold on to these black men. Let them go. I'm coming up on 10 years of dealing with nothing but non-black men. And my life is a dream. <laughs> my life is a dream. A dream. And what I dream and my desire is to be with my current husband until the day I die. Humans make mistakes, people make mistakes. I cannot tell you, you know, you know, nothing's guaranteed, but my idea and my desire is to be with my non-black husband to the day I die. We are so equally yoked. I, I, I would spend a whole two hours talking about how equally yoked we are. I don't want to be the only one out here, you guys, living my best life. This is why I make these videos for you ladies. So you can live your best life too. How to get a man, how to get a husband. Because I want you guys to live your best life too. And I personally think at this time, black women, stop dating black men date outside your race start looking at and becoming interested in and start sending those choosing signals and those smiles to men that are not black i don't think at this time black men and black women are compatible anymore i really don't i don't think you guys are compatible anymore times have changed and i think you guys need to take your own way my husband said take your way take your way i think you guys need to go your own way both of you not just black women i think black men you guys need to go date outside your race too i, I think both of you guys black men and black women i believe you are no longer equally yoked you are no longer compatible with each other and you both need to take your way and go your own way Okay, you guys, if you haven't already, be sure to hit the thumbs up, thumbs up button and share this video if you know somebody who could receive the message. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.